Hey, what's up, beautiful Bellcast listener? Welcome to the episode of Bellcast. I'm Gio. And I'm Bart, and we're back <laughs> in this motherfucker, baby. I'm just trying to fuck with you. Because <laughs> you said, I'm ready whenever you are, as you're drinking the fucking water. And that's how freaking crazy I am. I'm ready for anything. Anyway, we're going to do it again because your ass wasn't ready. I was ready. <laughs> I jumped ready. right in, you freaking amateur. <laughs> hey, what's up, beautiful Bellcast listeners? Welcome to another episode of Bellcast. I'm hey, Gio. Hey, what's up, my beautiful? <laughs> For Bear and welcome back to another episode for the very first time today. I'm Bart. You almost got me, but then you said first, so nah. then I win. But we're back. We're out of the quarantines. Papa is out of the quarantines. I love this beefy audio, and I really missed it when we're doing our whole Zoom uh, one. I know. It all sounds all like thin sounding, and I can hear you through my cheap ass, the freaking earbuds. These ones are like. Well, I mean, I'm next to you, so that beats anything. True. And that's really nice. True. There's no lag. Um, we're in a professional setting. I'm not next to my bed going, oh my God, does my room look good? Anyway, I'm just excited to be out of here. Me too. Or out of there, into here. Um, and I'm happy to be in everyone's ear holes and, in, and on your YouTube screen. Let what me ask we- you something. Yes. You know, like... We, I almost feel like um, our last podcast, being in separate rooms, being in quarantine. Was awesome, yeah? No. Like we, we were apart and like we just had the best time. No, I hated it. I, I love being with you. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, but I, I feel like that was like the ultimate culmination of 2020, right? Like 2020, everyone got hit the with year, some shit. Yeah. You had to pivot somehow. People were filing for unemployment. Like we, we had to... Toilet paper was missing. Uh, supermarkets. You know, I blame you for all of this shit, right? Wait, the whole year? Yeah, the year of the motherfucking rat. If you're a year of the rat, fuck all of you guys. That's fucked up. Anyway, what are you saying? So there's no toilet paper? Yeah, there's no toilet paper. Like, there's just been a crazy, crazy year, right? Oh, yeah. And then um, I, I don't think 2020 would have been a 2020, like our personal 2020, if we didn't wrap it up with something nice, some icing on top of a co- little quarantine action. But <laughs> now that we did that, right? <laughs> we, we got the full fucking experience. We got the full experience. <laughs> we don't feel left out. For 2021, what are some goals that you have? Personal, life fitness oh anything. shit like is there anything that you're like you know because when i came out like i don't know if you saw my post but in tw- uh, i had a post that i wrote um uh thank you 2020 almost like it was like me talking to 2020 like this quarantine is the best thing that could have happened to me because you know your family member 2021 your big brother i will beat the fuck out of him like that's how i felt coming Which out of 2020. 2021's like what the fuck did i do i'm just hey, coming in like you fucked up you should have put you should have handled your little brother 2020 because that's what happens you know like if you if you don't take care of your own or as they say yeah if you don't police your own other people will do it for you so 2020 uh 2021 you should have fucking put 2020 in check because guess what happened i'm coming after you now motherfucker so for you uh, oh my god <laughs> do you have any um 2020 goals life goals dreams anything like that that you're like 2020 help me back from this shit literally all my 2020 goals like what what is it <laughs> so i wanted to make uh a million dollars on my own whoa yeah i know it's a bit a big it's a big feat but i wanted to how make- about you do that and i take care of taika how about that that's a lot of money I know. So that's what I wanted to do for 2021. But but literally as I'm mapping out, remember we started meeting for like our personal shit and we were meeting for barbell shit. Right. And then I was meeting, I had like my assistant that I had hired. Like I was already like prepping to have all my own shit. I had like my whole year planned out. Boom, COVID hits, done. Everything done. We yeah. had to pivot, everything paused. People were getting sick left and right. I'm like, holy fuck fucking shit we had to shut down our gym so literally all my 2020 goals are going to be my 2021 goals so that's goal number one uh to make 20 uh to make a million dollars on my own with how you feel about 2020 though do you is it like a uh voracious appetite feel, no. or is it just like because you know some people if they can't do something in one year the next year it's like half motivation it was like well you know i kind of wanted that white dress for prom and now prom's over i'm not gonna get the white dress for college you know like what fucking accent was <laughs> i don't know but you know how some people it's like it uh that thing is tied to that time so for you do you feel no. just as amped or is it like i guess i didn't get it in no. 2020 so i'll get it in 2021 i'm not like hyper amped the way you are where you're gonna beat someone's motherfucking ass 
But I'm definitely going into 2021 with like, all right, bitch, like 2020, you taught me so many things. I'm so grateful for you because I got to spend a lot of time with you. I got to spend a lot of time with my mom, with my son. Like it was 2020 for me as, as like, I'm not really a negative person. So 2020 for me was a year of a lot of restructuring, a lot of self like discovery, a lot of personal connections that I got to make. Like I really got to see who my real friends were. Like, uh, I really got to see who I really care about, what I really care about. So now going into 2021, I have this, this, this type of confidence that I've never had in my whole life that I'm like, Oh shit. Like I'm just getting started, bitch. Like that. Damn. Yeah. I think I'm just finishing up. I'm tired. Oh no. I'm just getting started. I feel like I haven't really done anything for myself. Oh yes. In your whole life. Um, in my whole life. No, not my whole life. But now I have money. So things change. Okay. Right? So like I did do stuff for myself in the... Well, maybe it was in my whole life actually. Because I wasn't really doing it too much for myself. I think I was trying to prove shit. Yeah. To either my parents or my peers or the person I thought I wanted to be. Now I have like... Bro, I'm not bro you, but like bro the audience. Like I'm 37 now. Like I have a completely different grasp on life. You know, like, like, I think I was sharing this with you, uh, where trigger warning, it gets kind of, uh, a little bit dark, but when I was high and I was just thinking about death, you know, and I was just thinking about like, and this is some shit we read in memes all the time where it's like, yo, you're basically living to die, you know? And like, you can take it and get really fucking depressed or you can take that information and really like soak it all in and just be like, oh shit, my time's fucking limited. What am I doing wasting my time? The time that I already don't have, you know? So going into 2020 now, I'm like, I mean, 2021, I'm just like, oh shit, I'm ready. Like I'm, I'm not the geo I was in 2020 at all. Like I, I feel like I've grown and I've changed so fucking much that now I'm like, oh shit, I can't do what I was doing in the past and still be happy. Like if I continue to do what I've been doing, then I'm going to be a fucking miserable person. Mm. Yeah. Did that answer your question? I think so. Yeah. So uh, to making making a million on my own. The second one would be like to be the best shape in my life that I've ever been. So that means cleaning up my diet completely. But, oh, best shape. Shape. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, cleaning up my diet, um, especially, yeah, cleaning up all my diet, having more balanced meals and stuff. Like I might even become vegetarian because uh, I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like I just want to start testing out different food. We were hearing this, uh, we were hearing, I think one of your friends or something talk about water. And I'm like, that got me curious about water where I'm like, oh shit, does water really impact your health that much? Or You're the types really turning into my mom. Oh. My mom is vegetarian. She has that water machine. Like you can go to her uh, sink. But look at how and, vibrant. And you can choose what pH level you want the water. You want a pH nine? PH8, PH7. Damn, your mom's been living in the future. My mom's been going to Trader Joe's before Trader Joe's was a thing. When people are laughing at Trader Joe's, she's been going. Dude, there's so many things I love to eat that you're like, oh, I can't. I'm so traumatized because I grew up with that shit. Because it's popular now. Like, like fucking kombucha. My mom probably made kombucha with her piss when she was a kid. With her piss? I don't know how they make it, but my all the stuff that is like now popular, <laughs> yeah. I've been doing that shit for the past 20 years, so I'm so over it. Like everything's like, have you tried drinking apple cider vinegar? It's so good for you. I'm like, yeah, try drinking when you're five all the way until you're 10. You were drinking apple cider vinegar for that long? Yeah, like, and all of our cooking was all apple cider vinegar supposed to be good for you, right? And I'm like, uh, you know, when I make my dumpling sauce, I just want the clear vinegar. Can we just do that? All my Asian friends have clear vinegar. Why does everything have to be apple cider vinegar? I've been doing the fucking agave shit. Like it was popular. I don't know, like the last 10 years. I've been having weird ass agave in our house since I was like eight. It's weird. That is weird. Um, um, um yeah, it is weird, especially because you're, and you're turning into her and I'm very scared. I'm not even that extreme. Look at your titties. <laughs> don't I'm just kidding no I'm just kidding I don't I don't care I like I like you I like you discovering you figuring yourself out um and I'm, and I'm glad that finally at 37 you're beginning to figure out who you are <laughs> fuck you <laughs> no it takes a lot of trials and tribulations it man. does it really does 
I mean, you're still discovering yourself. Like there's so many things that like you have to go through life and you have to go through shit to really see what the fuck you're made of. That's the biggest thing that I think school fucks you up on where they make you feel like uh, failures or making mistakes is failing, but making mistakes are your steps to success. How does school contribute to that? Cause it's almost like, um, you know, like when you write like a, like something even kind of slightly creative, like an essay or something, right? Like, Hey, read this book and write your thoughts on there. Right. When you read it and it's not what the teacher wants, they're like, "Mm -mm, no, that's bad. And then you're like, oh shit. So every time you fuck up, it's a bad thing. You know, like, it's like, or like, let's say, Hey, we're all going to play basketball. Right. And then you have a couple of kids that like, he kicks the ball, kick ball. Versus, wait, that guy's very inclined to kick the ball. Hey, soccer coach, come over here. You want to see what this guy could do over there? I don't think that's a schooling thing. The way I felt in school is if you make a mistake, you're big trouble. That's your parents, bro. And that too. It's mainly your parents. But I, I like Because your school I, could be like, yo, I make trouble. And then yeah. your parents are like, wait, why does he keep getting in trouble? Oh, because he's kicking the basketball instead of dribbling it oh shit let's let's move our kid to something parents else parents ain't got time for that shit okay so don't blame the school though the school's like the school's part of the problem i mean okay fine so all i'm saying is i i, I really wish that there was like i think when i'm looking when, when we're looking for schools for taika that's one thing that i'm gonna be big on my mind like, yeah like, hey like when kids mess up like what is your guys's thought process and uh, what is like, do you guys punish them or how do you discipline them? And I really want to understand the philosophy of the school. Well, I think I like, so every time we're getting into this type of conversation, but every time I try to discipline or guide Taika, I'm always thinking about what do I want? What's good for our, our, uh, what is it? Dynamic, our personal at home dynamic what's good for the society dynamic and then what's good for Taika. So I'm, I'm constantly trying to balance those things. So we have, you know, our friends that came over a while back and they were telling us about their friend that was staying at their house and they have kids and they're part of, what was the school system that they're part of? Uh, not Waldorf, but, uh, oh, uh, Montessori. Yes. Yeah. They're part of the Montessori schooling and in that, in that curriculum, they don't like to tell the kids no. Yes. And, and, and the kid was probably like five or something. And that's just so fucking extreme to me. Cause I'm like, okay, that's cool for you and your dynamic, your family dynamic. And then for that kid, but now when this kid goes into society, what the fuck do you think's going to happen? You know? So like for me, I don't want something that's so extreme where it's like so fucking hippy dippy and so foofy doofy that like now when they're a member of society, they're a fucking outcast. Cause yeah. I don't want foofy doofy boofy hippie either. <laughs> I don't want that either. Yeah. I just want like, uh, like almost like a very Gary V style of thought is what I want. What's the Gary so, V so style do, of do thought? Do you think Gary V is hippy doofy boofy hoofy? No. So what I like about Gary V is um, he never really tells anyone they're fucking up. Yes, he does all the fucking time. Okay, I'll let you finish. If you have, if you have, if you want to have your cake and eat it too, he'll tell you you're fucking up. So one of the things that he always harps on is if you're 25 living at home off your parents' dollar, don't say that your parents don't support you. You know, that's what he says. Uh, but what I like about him is most of his core philosophy is based off of uh, mischanneling your efforts. Mm. So he says, I don't really believe in lazy people. I feel like people haven't found their passion yet. So it's mischanneling. Or um, you might feel like you hate your job or you're not good in life. It's not really that. It's just you haven't put your strengths in where it's going to thrive. So that's what I like. And that's yeah. what I'm talking about with, I think, with both school and parents. Not There's not enough, peop not enough people are paying attention yeah. to kids. And so they're not able to pick up that things are mischanneled. It's just they're so focused on what they have to do. I agree. So if they're so focused on what they have to do, like, like if you, if you don't want your kids to like bang on the piano like this, cause they're so focused, I got to get off 10 fingers on the piano. But if you paid, if you took a step back and like, oh wait, my kid's kind of percussive, maybe he should be a percussionist, <clears throat> you know, right. or like, oh, this kid really good at whistling. Let's put a recorder and see if we could advance from the recorder to something else, you know, like, so, uh, that's all I'm just, I I'm, agree. I'm viewing. Yeah. Viewing yeah. It, yeah. Like even I, like, you know, right now at home, he loves to scream, scream at the at the height of his freaking volume huh? in his lungs. 
Huh? Exactly. That's what happened. We can't even hear. Fucking a hole, man. And then so like my go to <clears throat> is for sure like um. For me, I'm telling like, him to like, shut his ass yeah. up. Yeah, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I can't fucking hear. But I also like that because you know, in boot camp, there's the people that war cry like this. Ah. So, well, he's gonna go. Ah. So, so there's people with zero intensity. You know, like there's people in PE, in drama or whatever, right? When it's time to commit, people have commitment issues because they're scared of putting themselves out there. Yeah. So the fact that he has. 112% commitment right yeah. now, I fucking love. Yeah. So I don't want to be the parent to uh, go, don't scream. And then now they're like starting getting timid and then uh, don't commit anymore. Yeah. Because I like people that are doing karate and like, ah, like that, right? Yeah. So I just tell them, you can't scream inside. You got to scream outside. Yeah, no, that's what I told him. Yeah. So like for, I think like. Because I'm like, I'm like, okay. Because I, I too am like that. Where I'm like, I don't want to suppress who you are and what yeah. makes you happy, yeah. but time and place, motherfucker. Yeah. Time and motherfucking place. Yeah. 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 I don't I don't like uh, those pussyfoot ass motherfuckers where it's like, you know what? The, you gotta fucking hecha la ganas, you know? Well, the H is silent, but it's la ganas, yeah. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> he just learned that today, you guys. Um, but real quick, you already know what time it is. I don't even have to say it anymore. Let's let's let's, let's introduce our next spot, our first sponsor. Thank you to our sponsor, BetterHelp. I freaking love these guys. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And this is so important because a lot of times you have thoughts that are mixed up in your head, either from your professional realm, from your romantic realm, or even with your family and your relationships. And it's really hard to deal with those things on your own. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you don't have a professional and you don't give the correct context, I mean, I don't, I've experienced it where sometimes my friends give me worse advice than I would have came up with myself. Or sometimes you just don't have anyone that you can reach out to immediately and they just stay in your mind. And I think that's the worst thing that you can do to yourself. Just yeah. keep those thoughts ruminating in your, in your head space. Yeah. And what's really cool with them is that they're very quick. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis hop, hop. It's not a crisis line. It's not self help. It is a professional counseling, and it's done securely online. And there is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. And the service is available for clients worldwide. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. And that's freaking cool. So that you don't have to feel like you're committed to that one person. You can keep testing people and you're like, oh, I really vibe with this one person. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So visit their website. Go to betterhelp.com slash bail. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash bail. B-E-A-W. And join over a million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states, which is super cool. So special offer for our listeners. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash bail. That's H-E-L-P, help.com slash bail, B-E-A-W. You get 10% off your first month. Go check it out. And we're back. <laughs> um, yes, I like the echole ganas. And, um, are you going to tell them what it means? Oh, uh, like, like, um, like, do it know, like you it, mean it. it. Yeah. Like do it like you mean it give it some effort. Like to fucking try, like, like try really hard. I fucking hated those kids. You know that? What kids? Like the, for me, the, uh, for me. Yeah. Like for me, like ever since I was a kid, I always liked like, if we're going to do it, let's fucking do it. Right. So like the kids that are like, this is fucking lava. Oh shit. It's fucking lava. And then there's the kids like. Oh, no lava. Or there's even kids that are like, there's no lava. And I'm like, man, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck you those and fuck kids. you. <laughs> and then, you know, there's people that are like play, uh, pretending, like just play pretend. Let's just fucking commit. And then you go to like martial arts. Those and are then, the adults we don't like. Yeah, and there's martial arts like, huh, huh, right? And then like 100% are like, mm, fuck, I love that shit. And then there's people that are like, this is over. Oh. I'm not as intense as you are, but I'm not the pussyfooter either. Yeah. Because you're really intense. Am so I? like if I'm in the karate class, I'm not going, ah, ah. I'm probably just going, ah, ah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not doing that either. I'm probably oh. like fucking around. But if it's time to do something, then I'm going to do it like I mean it, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah. So with, with Taika, um, yeah, I do want to, that's one thing I learned in 2020, especially when you were in quarantine. Remember you were like, you felt so guilty because unfortunately when 
you catch COVID, you're sick and it's pretty big sick. Um, you really can't do much because you're just stuck in a room. You're in your bed. You're just trying to fucking survive. And you, you, we were FaceTiming every day. And then one of those days you were like, man, I feel so bad. Like I can't work, you know? And I'm like, fuck, I can't work either. Cause we don't have grandma. Taika is like so rambunctious and energetic and just has fucking kid ADD. There's no way you can focus and do any type of adult work. Um, and you were like, man, like, okay, I'm going to try to get up and do some work. And I'm like, wait a minute, let's just take this as a blessing in disguise. Cause when do we actually have the excuse, if you will, um, to take time off like this? You know, the only time really that like, I think the whole world excuses time off is when you've worked really fucking hard and you've earned that vacation time. But for a business owner, you don't really get that. Um, and then the only time for that is Christmas, like holidays, everything shuts down. But other than that, you don't really have that. No one ever will understand when you want to take that time off. So when you had that, I'm like, hey, take this as a blessing in disguise. Take some time for you. Like, I don't think our company is going to fucking die in two weeks. And if it were to die in two weeks, we need to quit being business owners because we fucked up. So I was like, dude, take your time. Connect with yourself. Take some time off. Enjoy being a human for a little bit because we work so fucking hard that when I saw that we had this this time off, uh, that I'm like, man, I'm going to just take it all in and make the best of it. And I had the most wonderful time. And I'm not even joking. I'm not trying to make you feel bad at all. But I had the most wonderful time bonding with Taika. It's really hard to make me feel bad. Oh, <laughs> I bet I can do it. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think so. I'm very, very logical. So like when you tell me you have the best time without me, I'm like, fucking awesome. That's, <laughs> That's so cute. good. Yeah, because for me, I'm like. My ultimate goal is Taika's ultimate happiness and Taika's um, living his best life. So if I'm preventing him from doing that, fuck me. Yeah, fuck you. So for me, I'm like, when you go like, we're going to go to Disneyland. I'm not the type like, oh, I'm going to go. I, I'm that type. I'm that I type. I know, I know. Because I'm you're, like, I know. I'm like, no, we all got to be miserable together. I mean, you're That's, still figuring out who you are at 37, you know? So, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of levels to this. So for me, I already figured it out. I'm not going to be honest with you anymore. You're trash. <laughs> you're trash. No, so for me, I'm like. You're still figuring yourself out too. We all are. <laughs> what the hell is that? A fucking... Neener, like a, neener yeah, moment. Exactly. Yeah, fucking second grade comeback. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You're thinking you're never going to you. Yeah, I'm rubber. You're glue. That's oh, yeah, I, I know you're figuring yourself out, but what am I? <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. I'm going to tell my mom. Yeah. So... Yeah, I took that opportunity to be like, okay, I can be he sitting here stressing the fuck out, constantly on my phone, hoping that like these new messages come in that I don't like miss seeing, or I can just trust my team that they're going to handle it. Because I'm not trying to do this shit for the rest of my fucking life. Like my team needs to handle it, you know, and that's going to show me what type of leadership I've, I've implemented. So I'm like, nope, I'm going to let them handle it. I'm going to appreciate all of them say, hey, thank you so much for carrying my load on your back for these next two weeks. I think you can handle it. And then I was just with Taika. Like we were cooking together. Like I made so much content on, <laughs> online with just me and him. Like we were swimming. We were like, he would make a beat because he's into beatboxing right now, which is fucking funny. And he's actually really good. He'd make a beat. And then I would start improvising like a melody to it. And then we would continue that for a minute. We did a bunch of arts and crafts. Like it was just such a dope bonding experience. So, um, so yeah, like with that, I got to learn so much about him because I was letting him take the, like lead the charge pretty much. And it wasn't things that I wanted to do. Like, I'm like, let me just see what he wants to, like, like let me just hear his conversations. Let me play what he wants to play instead of me doing what's convenient for me, what I have the time for. And it was a completely world flip. It was, it was pretty cool. Like, I think we all under, I, I'll just speak for myself, but I think I really underestimated kids at his age I just thought they were like dumb you know and not dumb for the sake of dumb but I just thought they just they hadn't they're just not intelligent enough to comprehend a lot of things but when I was spending really time with him and like really spending it with him on him only on him I'm like holy shit these kids are fucking intelligent they're dumb from the adult's perspective and, yeah. the, and the adult's uncreative mind right i was about to say that they're so fucking creative yeah because it's almost like you know like jazz is the epitome of music right and if you are dumb at music you think it I'm sounds dumb. exactly it sounds like noise, noise right but as you progress in music 
you end you end up landing at jazz. It's the most improv improvisational, most creative. It's music, sex. It's like the craziest thing in the world, right? Oh, uh, I want to get to that point. So, like that's that's where where it's at. And I think a lot of kids innately are having like jazz, success, like jazz success. life. But if your if your mind is so structured, because as adults we were taught like this is how the world operates. You got to vote. You got to do this, and then you got to go. You pay your taxes, and then you got to work this. You know. So your, our minds are very cookie cutter, very used to the radio edit. If it doesn't sound like this, that's not music. Correct yourself. That sounds like noise. Um, but yeah, like the couple of times where I bond with Taika, like almost every time we hang out and it's one on one, I really let him lead. And then I really try to open up my mind and and throw away like any adult uh, pre, pre notions that I have. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, this kid has his own his own lens of the world. Like, you know, the other day we're walking to the park and we have these little sewer caps like in the community um, landscaping, not sewer caps. They're more like little hubs for where all the sprinklers connect. So when they do need to fix anything, they don't have to dig into the ground. They can troubleshoot like all the sprinkler oh, cool. connections. Yeah. And there are these, there's probably like 20 or 30 of them. And every single <laughs> one we were walking by, he had to open them and see what the hell's inside. And it was the same thing every time. And I don't even know if it's legal or not, <clears throat> but he would want to open it. So I'm like looking around. I'm like, go ahead. And then he would open it. And then there's little frogs in there, little lizards. And he's just like so excited and so happy where like, you know, when we left the house, I was like, hey, you want to go to the park? And he's like, yeah, the park. So as an adult, like the minute you have a destination, that's what you're one track minded on, you know? And then so when we're walking and he wanted to keep opening all these sewer caps, I'm like, no, let's get to the park, let's get to the park. And then I'm like, wait, if he's having more fun opening these sewer caps, who am I to say that the park is where the fun is at? What it's if all the, about the journey. Yeah, what if it's the journey? Not the destination. So I was just like, go ahead. <laughs> There's about 30 of these guys. <laughs> Fuck it. And then by the time we got to the park, it was dark because <laughs> that's how much time we spent. We spent probably an hour and a half walking to the park that's when, it, when it usually only takes like 20 minutes. Yeah. One of the goals I had in 2020 was to strengthen the bonds with my family and friends. Yeah. And I honestly, genuinely feel like I made that happen in 2020. Oh, nice. So that's at least one of the goals that I can go check. You yeah. know, because I like I was saying in the beginning, like I really got to discover who it was that I really cared about and who really cared about me. And I'm not saying that, oh, you don't care about me. I don't care about you. It wasn't like that. It was more of like, oh, shit, these people, we just don't we're just moving in different directions. And I think that's OK. Not that I have any hard feelings towards anyone, but it was one of those where I'm like, oh, wow, we're just we're just we just went in different in different paths. And I'm like, that's cool. And then the people that were on my path. I'm like, oh, fuck, I like you're my people, you know, so I really got to to focus on that. And I'm, I'm also including family members in this because uh, family, too. There's just some people that are just not a right fit, you know, like you're just kind of forced into this relationship. And um, we feel like and I was raised this way that you can't, you know, blood, blood is thicker than water. Right. Like that's been said for fucking centuries. But you're also taught or I was taught that like you don't ever turn your back on family members, but some, sometimes that shit's fucking toxic and sometimes that shit's really unhealthy and like you have to kind of cast them aside a little, a little bit because their problems don't have to be your problems. So you kind of cast them aside a little bit and you just got to keep going down your path. And I think I did that also in 2020 where I'm like, because it was so instilled in me to like never do that, but it was just bringing so much drama into my life that like me finally going, nope, sorry, buddy, you got to take care of your own shit at this moment. Because if you like I've offered my help and if you don't take it, then now I'm just like, you know, losing a piece of myself that I could be giving to you or to the people that that I love and respect and, and reciprocate that. Um, and it felt really good to just be like, when you're ready for a relationship, we'll move on. But for now, like, just move, move aside, buddy. I think that's what love is true is too, though. Like, I think true love, like I've heard this from the start. So like Joe, I love Joe, right? I love Joe. Um, he's my best friend and we've done so much together. And I think like the first time that maybe we would have started not because we used to do everything together, all the shows, every single merch, every single song, um, every single creative artistic art form we've done together. And 
um, when, when we started doing our own things, like let's say I did barbell or even with him, he started like dusky hunters with can just like the slightest bit. I think people that don't understand our level of love, that's the first thing they go to where they're like drama. Wait, you're not doing that with Joe or you're not doing that with Bart. And then it's almost like, Mm -hmm. um, you guys are cheating on each other. Yeah. And then it's also like, they just can't comprehend how, uh, growing apart isn't growing apart or growing different isn't growing apart. Right. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. So like people, they automatically think that because you have other, you're going sideways that you're immediately growing apart. But to me, it's like, we all have all these facets of ourself, right? And you owe it to yourself to express all those facets. Right. So if you have 10 bucket list dream things, one is to be a hairdresser. One is to be a turtle tamer. One's to be, you know, <laughs> I want to do that one. Like you have all the, I mean, they're, that's actually probably one of the easiest ones to tame. But like, if you have all these things, if he can't pursue those things because he feels like he's bound to me yeah. or like, or vice versa, you're not honoring I think, him. I don't think that's love. And I think that's, like crabs in a bucket, you're just right. holding each other down, right? Yeah. And so like when when I see Joe, like we haven't hung out in a long time and he, he, he's been hanging out with all those mushroom people. <laughs> what the hell, Joe? Why are you leaving Bart <laughs> no, behind? No, like me seeing him do that <laughs> makes me so happy. Yeah. Me seeing him uh, go hang out with Darian and do all his van life outdoor stuff makes me so happy because obviously I would want to do it with him. But in my point in life right now, I'm locked down by my family. Why well, you do that to him, Gio? I'm just kidding. So I can't, I'm locked down by my family, so I can't do those things, <laughs> yeah, right? But like, I'm happy. Yeah, but I'm happy for, for them. And that's why like, I'm also happy with you and Taika if you guys were to go to Disneyland without me. Because to me, I don't see growing apart like this. I think everyone has like a, if you're a pessimistic mind, I think oh, you see, yeah. I think you see the, that. You see the, the, the journey like this. For me, I see it like this. And it always leads back to the same Yeah, place. and imagine how enriching your guys' conversations are going to be now, yeah. how enriching your guys' like, trade of information is. Like Now both of you guys got to live in different spaces. So now when you guys do reconnect, you guys are going to learn so much more from each other. And that's what I felt with, you know, specifically in like my family members, that I had to kind of be like, wait a minute. Because it got to a point where I, it felt like I was being selfish. Because now it felt like, I know what's better for you. I know... Um, that this is the type of life you could be living, but because I don't know their inner turmoil or, you know, just whatever trauma they may have gone through that I just don't understand, that it became something where I'm like, wait a minute, am I doing this because I think this is better for them through my own lens or is it really better for them for the sake of them? So then I just had to be like, oh shit, they just need to go on their path and do what they have to do and I need to just stick to mine. And then once we cross path, cross paths, then of course I'll, I'll, you know, open arms and like, I'm ready to go, you know, but, but yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying too. And I've never heard you say anything like, uh, where you're sad or hurt that, you know, cause I know you were joking right now, like saying, oh, he's hanging out with Dar-. like, you don't really give a fuck. Like I'm you're saying about that, to- I'm saying that from the, the outside, the outside pers- person's point of view. Yeah. I'm playing someone else. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And I think I, I love that you're that way. I love it. I even feel like that is even true for marriage. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, um, I think it's almost unrealistic to go like, when we get married, we're 25 and then we're on our honeymoon phase. And then for some reason, when we're 30, our honeymoon phase is even on steroids. And then when we're 45, we're even more romantic than when we were when we we're 25. I'm like, I don't think like People anything. People really think like that. I don't that. think anything is like this. I think it's like like this. Absolutely. And there's times like when you talk to old couples, there are times like they're like, you know, honestly, from 40 to 50, we were going to get a divorce. Yeah. And we fucking hated each other. And we slept in separate rooms for 10 years. Yep. And then but you see the way that they are now and you're like, fuck, How? you guys traveled the world together. You guys fucking love each other. What the hell? Yeah. So I'm like, I think what happens is um, everyone is a their individual being. So they have to uh, express themselves fully no matter what. But I think the not talking part and then the hatred part comes from when the other two people aren't allowing each other to express themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I think when, when that happens, then I think you're double fucked because one, not only are you not experiencing the growth that you have to, 
because there's just this natural thing where I think we all want to not like necessarily grow in a career, but like just figure your shit out. Yeah. Um, that you have to do yourself, but then also, um, the other person is not letting you do that. So now you kind of hate them for it. Yeah. You know, or I feel like, I think you got to like just live and figure yourself out. Cause you even have that same relationship with yourself. Like there's, Absolutely. there's times I'm like sitting there and I'm like, you know how I was telling you, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm gonna get rid of all my shoes. I think I'm kind of just like a, a Vans kind of guy, just straightforward, just black Vans and, and you're not lying and black shirt. And then like, <laughs> <laughs> right. I, blue so I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm just that kind of guy. And then I'm like, and then, and then you're like, oh, why don't you do that? And I'm like, because I've done that before. And then after like a year, I'm like, fuck, I miss colors. I buy all kinds of colorful shoes. And then I buy all these colorful shoes. I'm like, what the fuck? Look at this fruity ass motherfucker. Get rid of these goddamn shoes. Let's go back to all these black clothes. So even with yourself, you're constantly like second guessing yourself and you're not letting yourself live, you know? Yeah. But I also feel like that's just, you always, you always like go apart and you come back together, go apart, come back together. But every time you come back together, you have a new epiphany. And that's when you finally are able to actually level up and have a better understanding. But it takes the going apart even from yourself to do that. Yeah, I agree. Um, let me pause you real quick because I want to introduce our next sponsor. I'm so excited to be uh, working with our next sponsor, honey. I've been using them, honestly, for now, I want to say over a year, almost two years now. Two and years. it's the best decision that I've ever, ever made. So, honey, imagine this. Uh, you're shopping because right now we're all shopping for holiday gifts and some random person just goes, hey, here's some extra cash. Go buy something else with that money. That's what Honey does for you. You're going to shop. Um, I've been doing so much online shopping and right as I'm about to check out, this little drop down box, uh, it, it falls down and it says, hey, I found a promo code for you that's going to save you five, 10, 20, whatever amount that you know the code's for. And it just automatically adds it before you have to check out. So it adds it and like, it's like magic. You just saved money. And I'm like, oh, honey, you're my best friend. I absolutely love it. All you do is just download a plugin. It takes no more than a minute, honestly. You download it, it stays in your toolbar um, and you literally forget that you even have it there up until the point that you're about to check out. And what's really dope about Honey that they just added is you can also make a list of all the holiday gifts that you want from certain stores and Honey will email you when the prices drop on anything on your list. Like I've seen it happen time and time again where I'm about to check out and they're like, oh man, we didn't find anything uh, or any promo codes, but do you want us to email you when it drops? And I'm like, uh, F yes. And they do exactly that. So just make sure to just add Honey to your computer, create a free account and throw some holiday gifts on your drop list for a chance to win. So they're doing this giveaway right now. So Honey will randomly select winners and give them the money to help you buy something on the list. So right now, make sure to just create that list because you never know. Honey might just buy that for you. Um, so just make sure that you know that there is no purchase necessary to enter their giveaway. So there is no purchase necessary. You need a PayPal account to redeem the prize only valid in the U S and giveaway ends, uh, December 21st, 2020. Okay. So, um, make sure that you get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash bill. That's joinhoney.com slash bill B E A W. And we're back. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with what you're saying. There's people, and I mean, I think this could be something that Hollywood did to us, or I don't know where a lot of us got this, at least in the US, at least in the US, it happens this way where it's like, like you were saying, you know, we're going to get married at 25 and then we're going to have our honeymoon. And then after our honeymoon, you know, 10 years later, we're going to have even harder honeymoon because the whole like happily ever after, right? Like, I think you even said it like Disney fucked us up, you know, because yeah. it's like, it's like the girl that needs rescuing from the guy. And luckily that shit's been changing now, which is really, really dope. Um, shout outs to Frozen, because that was one of the first ones I saw that I'm like, oh shit. Okay, Elsa doesn't need a man. She's just her own thing. Anyway, um, you can tell I'm a fucking mom now. <laughs> you are. Yeah, but like the whole concept of like- Still don't know who you are though. Of shut the fuck up. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not like changing dramatically. I think I'm just like fine tuning it. You know what I mean? Like I'm this fucking beautiful harp. Are you? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I'm like this gold polished, fucking exotic looking, beautiful harp. And I, I already sounded really good. Did you? And then a, 
<laughs> and just a couple notes, you know, like after yeah. so much fucking banging. Yeah, finger banging. Yeah, yeah. She got finger banging like a motherfucker. You like why I did that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> With all the banging that's been happening, like you just, like there's some chords that just don't sound right. And you're like, what is that? And then you keep banging it and banging it. And you're like, oh, it's that string. Let me fix that a little bit. So when I'm saying I'm discovering myself, it's not like I'm becoming a new instrument. I'm still the fucking exotic, beautiful harp. But even if you did, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with it either. Um, I'm recently just, you were saying like you wanted to shave your head. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm oh, like, I'm going to do it. I'm like, go fucking do it. No, you didn't. You were like, uh, if you want to. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking about the electricity bill. It's going to take a lot. The, the clippers. I do have a lot of hair. Yeah. So I was just thinking about the electricity. It's bill. okay. We can use scissors. Yeah, let's do scissors then. Yeah. And then I'll just pick it. I'll get a, I'll get a razor. So why, there's no electricity. Why don't we just fucking whack that shit with nair? <laughs> have you ever used nair before yes i have that and it's crazy. so painful when did you use it because i just see it in the commercials so i thought it'd be fun so i bought it me and my homies and then we sprayed our legs and spray they, i've never seen a spray or is it there that sprays it's the one that you spray it on and then literally melts the uh like you spray it on i've only used the and you wait 10 minutes and you can get like a towel and, and then you wipe it right off. and it melted the hair off yeah i use the cream it's like a lotion oh so that shit and was that crazy. And that thing smells nasty. That thing was crazy. Yeah. No, no, I wouldn't want to do that to my head. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to shave my head. Uh, but yes, so going back to my original thought, yeah, we all think it's supposed to go in this straight line and it's not, you know? Like you were saying, like even with yourself, you know, you go back and forth and you're All just, the time. You're constantly fine tuning. And I think that's the beautiful part about life. You know, it's like a lot of self-discovery, a lot of just discovery, like go out and discover shit in the world. Like I'm so excited for this trip that we have um, coming up at the end of this month where we're going to go with just a few select handful of friends. We're going to COVID fucking test before and motherfucking after you, but believe that shit. But yeah, we're going to go and we're going to go to Utah and we're just going to fucking RV it and it's going to be the best fucking shit ever. We're also you know? going to be outdoors the whole time. And what's cool is every couple has their own RV. Yeah, exactly. Which is pretty fucking cool. Yeah. So like, I've never done that before. Yeah. So like, that's a form of self-discovery that like, I can't wait to learn a bunch of shit. Like, yeah. like I'm going to learn about traveling that way. I'm going to learn about, you know, what the fuck I made out of. We're going to do a bunch of outdoor activities and it's just going to be so exciting. And I think that's what really, that's what life is about. When, you know, when I was telling you that I had that bad trip, uh, that started off as a bad trip when I was, uh, I was smoking and I started thinking about death. And I'm like, holy shit, again, trigger warning, uh, where I'm like, fuck, we're all just waiting to die. And at this moment, Tyke was washing fucking produce. Yeah. And I was looking at him stand on this on this chair and I'm just thinking about it, I could already start crying. But I'm like, oh, I'm never going to have this moment again with him. Like, I'm fucking. I think some people are waiting to die. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's unfortunate, you know, but I was standing there and I was seeing him. And I'm like, oh. My son's so beautiful. This moment is so beautiful. And I was really present in that moment. And I'm like, oh, I love this moment so much. And then there, and then it hit me. And I'm like, oh my God, we're going to die someday. Some of us are going to die tomorrow. Some of So then I started going into this dark hole that could have easily put me into some type of fucking entry level fucking depression. And I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. But that's what's dope about life. You know, and I think when I was talking to you, you were like, yeah. You can't take this shit for granted because imagine if we lived forever, how much shit you would put aside or you wouldn't even, you know, care to appreciate. So like the fact that our time is limited here, it's like, no, go discover who you are. See how many people you can help and how many people you can emotionally touch and like connect with and learn from. And like, um, I'm not one for leaving a legacy. Like that's never been my thing. I don't know. I know that there's some people out there that are like, I have to leave my mark. You know, but for me, I'm just like, I just want to create a beautiful world around me. So whoever's around me, I just want to make them feel like they've experienced something beautiful when I'm in that space. Um, and I think that's like the only thing that really got me out of that, like little bit of like dark trip that I was having where I'm like, like, damn, I got to live more. I got to do more shit. I think you do. Yes. I don't think you live enough. What, 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 do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Give me, give me, give me. Because you're 37, you're still freaking shit out. You motherfucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, though, I do think you need to live more. Because I think, I, I don't know if it's because like you're so considerate and you're like, you're so selfless. So for you, I think you have an urge to do something 
And then your first go-to thought is, how does this affect the people around me? It, I do. And I think because of that, I don't think you live as much as I do. Because when I have a Yeah, urge, you're pretty selfish. My, very. You're fucked when up. I have a you're thought, so mean. When I have a thought, the first thing I, my next thought is, how do I make that happen? That's my immediate. So for you, um, I think I'm constantly living. But for you, I think you're constantly already self-editing. And so I do feel like you owe it to yourself to, and that's why I'm, I think that's why I'm also always encouraging you to, you know, like you're always like, yeah, I'll take Taika over for a day, a week, whatever, go do whatever you got to do. Like, but then I think, but even, I enjoy even, that too. I know you do, but I also think this is this. So for me, I always feel like it always starts with the person first. So for example, like a clear example that we've had this conversation about for me, I feel like I wake up, like we're both machines, right? I feel like I need to wake up put oil in all this machine, AKA work, workout, warm up the car. So now the car is ready for a road trip, right? That's how I feel like that needs to be. And then I can give Taika the best dad possible car. Also, even my creative expression, I think like by me being creative or me signing up for a dance class or singing class, that is that way when I am talking to Taika creatively, I'm giving him my level A creativity or even jujitsu. I need to go learn jujitsu. So when I teach Taika how to defend himself, I'm not teaching him from a dad that doesn't know what he's doing. I'm <laughs> teaching him from, like my dad who taught me basketball, who yeah. doesn't know nothing about basketball, right? We shoot it through the legs. <laughs> right, exactly. So for me with Taika, I, uh, I want to be the best person that I am and make sure I'm fully expressed. So the stuff that I pass on to him is the best version of me. Right. Versus if I'm like a, a lazy fuck, right? And what then we, we, what are you point at me for? <laughs> what you, the fuck? Like, let's say I'm a lazy fuck. I'm, I'm not, not lazy in, at all. I'm not into fitness. I'm not active at all. The Taika that the dad that he's gonna get isn't gonna be the one that's gonna be climbing with him on the jungle yeah, gym. Yeah, you're gonna be on your phone. Like when I'm playing with Taika, it's like I'm five too, you know, and we're going crazy. Whatever he wants, I'll keep up with him. He might not be able to keep up with me. Hey, if you're a parent and your kid's playing and you're just on your phone, you're fucking you need to change that shit that's so fucking rude and so that to me is just one sliver of it of you know so i think for me it all starts with me so that i have to do all those things yeah so that i can give him the best versions you see for me the perspective is a little bit different right because i get a lot of fulfillment and enjoyment when i know that the people around me that i love are yeah. taken care of yeah. and once i feel like that's done yeah I feel the phone. Uh, once I feel like that's done and taken care of, then I feel so fucking fulfilled. I feel like I just ate the best fucking dinner ever. And that's awesome too. Yeah. So like, but with that, I also have to learn to be a little bit more selfish and just be like, and I've been trying to do that more. Whoa, I just totally spit. Like the trip when we got the invitation, normally I would have been like, oh my God, no, I can't inconvenience my mom. I thought you were going to say no. I, I don't want to. Yeah, this is me changing them. Yeah. Like I, you know me, like I'm constantly trying to evolve. Like yeah. the person that I am today is not the same geo as last month. And it's definitely not the same geo as last year. Like I'm constantly trying to just refine myself yeah. to be the fucking best harpy ever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, when the initial invitation came in, Immediately, my old ways were like, I'm not going to inconvenience my mom. I'm not going to inconvenience my brother. I'm not going to spend time away from my son like that on the holiday. Like, that's so fucked up. I need to be with him. But because I had, you know, the quarantine time to just kind of chill with him that I'm like, no, I think that's OK. Yeah. Like, that's what family's for. They love him so much. They he fucking gets love when he comes <clears> over. <throat> they do. And I'm like, wait, I got to shift my, you know, I need like a paradigm shift here. I need to shift my perspective on how I feel how I assume people feel about things. So just because I feel about them that way, or I feel like they're going to think about them that way, that's not necessarily the truth. So I was like, wait a minute. No, what's the real truth here? I've heard them say, please like, let him come and play. And I'm like, Oh, cause they really like him. And my mom, like she loves him like crazy. So it's like, why would I rob them from that? I'm like, yeah, go. Do you guys want to take care of him? You guys are down. Okay, cool. This is what's going to happen. We're going to take off for a little bit. We're going to have some adult time. Uh, we're going to hang out with our friends. We're going to, and like everyone is fulfilled and everyone has a good old time. But like I'm saying in the past, I would have been like, no, 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 no. But I've been learning. I've been learning to be more like, no, it, we need balance, bro. We need, we need balance. That's good. That's yeah. really good. Thank you. Damn. I feel like I didn't even hear any of your goals. Uh, maybe <laughs> my goals aren't that important. Oh, sorry. 
No, no, I'm just saying that I don't think that's that important. Oh, yeah, you just you just sounded like you were like ready. I I am ready. I think. I think next year. I think like um, the first thing I, I want to do is get back into, if not the best shape, close to it, and I'm gonna try to do it as hard as I can. Maybe in a short amount of time. <clears throat> maybe like within a month or two. Oh shit. Um. Yeah. Like I want to just. I want to like. Kind of like within 30 days, just do 30 workouts at the minimum. It'd be about, it'd be awesome if like maybe on the 30 weekend. 30 independent workouts or yeah. like a whole program that's just for 30 days at the end? Uh, Just 30 <laughs> workouts in 30 days. Oh shit. I want to do that with you. Yeah. And then maybe, um, and then like, you know, I think ever since we had a kid or even ever since we started getting busy, I used to work out six days a week. When you first met me, it was six days a week, like go to the gym, lift weights six days a week. And it became five, became four. And then once I had Taika, the only way to balance everything was three. So it was just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And, um, but it's really hard, you know, like if, if you're, if you have, if you spend more days putting calories in than burning calories, it's just really it's hard inevitable. to achieve anything. Yeah. So that's why I had this thought of like, man, I feel like in 2019, I think I did get really strong. I actually did a really good job pivoting in my opinion. Like I was really close to squatting 500. Um, but now that it is 2021, I mean, 2020, now it's 2021, coming out of 2020, um, I'm like, I want to get back to where I was lean and proud, where like I can like walk around shirtless and not feel like- Jiggles? Yeah, feel jiggles and chubby, you know? So I'm like, instead of doing it the moderately paced way, I'm like, I'm just gonna immediately, 2021 comes around, 30 days straight working out and then see where I go from there. And that might really jumpstart it. And then, so I was even thinking about writing like a free program called like 30 day jumpstart or something just to, Oh shit. Y'all heard it here first. Yeah. Just to put it out there. Give anyone, down. anyone else that doesn't feel like, um, that, that, that feel like, you know, I've been stuck at home in 2020 and I don't feel that good. And then there are also a lot of gyms that are opening back up now too, that they're just like, you know what, if the government's not going to take care of me, I got to take care of myself. Yeah. So, and there's a lot of sheriffs that are coming out saying like, Hey, like the government. Oh, you mean illegally opening back up? I'm not even call it illegal because it's it's kind of gray area and the okay. gray area the gray the, area opening back up the gray area opening back up because what the sheriffs a lot of sheriffs at least in California what they're saying is what the governor wants is a health order I'm not here to enforce health orders I'm here to enforce criminal orders oh right so, no and, gym is doing criminal and then they're shit. like and if a business wants to be a business and mm. stay open that's not criminal unless they're doing criminal activities so if you if you want to open up your doors and then so I'm like you know what I think there's a lot of people that probably feel the same way that I do where when I finished a marathon, I was probably like 180. I'm probably like 205 right now. So I'm trying to, that, that's my first thing I want to, um, what is it called? Get back in my best shape. And then I think a lot of my other goals are kind of just, and I really, really, really want to get back into jujitsu. And I don't know if I'm going to continue that much of it here. Cause I, I do want to find a school that I really like out in Vegas when we move there and really become committed. Cause like, that's, that's one thing about jujitsu that's really huge about it is community. So, um, you actually don't want to change professors. Like you build like a bond and a relationship. So even one of my friends who's been doing jujitsu for a long time, he moved out to Vegas because his wife is going to school there when he's there for, um, a year. Cause I know he's pretty close to getting his brown belt. I was like, oh, cool. You think you're going to get promoted to Brown Belt while you're in Vegas? He goes, no, nah, I wouldn't even want to. He goes, because I'm there just to temporarily train. I want to go back and then get promoted by my professor. Oh, So that's like how strong the community and honor and wow. like that, that's how that is, you know? Yeah. So I like that. I, I, I want to be like part of like a, like a ride or die like team for that's life. Beautiful. Like, like that kind of team. Yeah. I think the other thing is um, I, I want to build like a really CUNY house in Vegas. I think the house that we chose is freaking cool. I think the area is freaking cool. And since we're making such a big move, I think like you, um, I want to make sure my relationship with my dad is way better. And then now more than ever, since we're only going to have each other, since we're moving out there, like if he, like, I think his, his goal is to have always been like either take Taika to school or um, pick him up from school. He's right about that age to start school. So I want to make the last remaining years of my dad's life happen. So the things I know my dad cares about a lot is Taika, getting the Chinese newspapers. I got to find mm -hmm. where that place is. And then my dad loves dim sum. So if I could take my dad to dim sum like once a week or once every two weeks, 
And I know there's a ton of good Asian food out there. That's like my main thing is like fixing my relationship with my dad. Um, being Wow, at 36, huh? Barely. God, there it comes. Wow, that's a... Hey, I'm happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and I want to find a place where my dad, it's close to my dad, you know, where it doesn't feel, because right now I probably, I bet it feels like a chore. My dad probably has to drive like 30 minutes, but if my dad could nah, be Nah, they like, got time. It could be like five, 10 minutes. <clears throat> I think that'd be really cool, especially with all those big ass parks in, in the Vegas. I think it'd be really cool for like, for all of that. So fitness, jujitsu, um, really like revamping our, our vlog channel kind of figuring out the voice of what we want and really showcasing yeah. what we want. And I think um, systemizing like Barbell Brigade, like really treating it as a business. I think for us, although we work hard, we don't have very clear direction and focus. So it's just a bunch of well, like- Well, because it started as uh, two idiots that were like, this, this is a cool idea. I want to do it. Sure. Yeah. And then we did it and we're like, yo, we did it. Now what? Yeah. And we, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Yeah. And then I think uh, next year, I also really want to focus on myself uh, very creatively, too. Yes. Which I think I have. I started that with the book, the children's book that I'm writing. But if you want to hear more about that, listen to the, the podcast before this one. Yeah, I think it's called I'm Writing a Book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. The, yeah. And I think uh, yeah, either like starting starting to work on stand up some more or we even writing my own movie. But just like really getting my creative thoughts out there, I think it'd be really, really cool. Nice. It's like my main goals for next year. Yeah. Hell yeah. 2021. I'm going to say it first because all of us were afraid to say this shit. But 2021 is our year. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. I really do. So many people are like, I ain't going to say shit. <laughs> 2021 is a year. 2021 is a year. Cool. Well, that was nice. <sighs> I'm ready for 2021. <sighs> Not to be a downer, but some, uh, I guess, uh, publications and some government agencies think say it's possible the quarantine can end in 2021 too. We got the end of it. Oh, we could be living this pandemic life for hey, two I years. Hey, I don't mind. I'm gonna ha I'm gonna I'm gonna be in a new place where I'm gonna go hiking, and I'm just gonna. We just gotta pivot. You know what I mean? You can't be a downer. Like you can't accept the down. Yeah, you gotta figure you out. You can't accept it. You, you gotta, just have to be like, oh, that's what you think a downer is, while well, your downer is actually my upper. Yeah, you gotta be, and I'm be gonna, a bob and weave. Exactly. Like you Mike know, Tyson. that's a fucking champion mindset, and yep. you can't be like, oh, it's gonna end next year. Oh man, I'm just gonna sit in my chair and be pouty. No, okay, it's gonna end. Well, let me see what I can do about that. That's well, fucking hiking's free. Shit, being online is free. Yeah. Like, there's so many, there's so many ways around it. You know, you gotta have that champion mindset. That's uh. The pr one of the people that really inspired the fuck out of me this year is Dana is White. Me? Oh, no, not you. Oh, because of his Fight Island. Yeah, because like he's the man. Like, think about how many. So my coach Ron, he was uh, supposed to be in two fights that I know of, right? Both got canceled because of COVID reasons. Um, Bellator, I don't, they think they just started back up. So many MMA federations just completely shut mm -hmm. down, and they're willing to wave the white flag. You know, surrender, surrender. No, the yeah, others. Dana White, he's like. He's relentless. If I have a goal, that's fucking it. So for him, he was going to buy an island. He was negotiating with all the different states, all the different places to do, to make sure it happens. He finally organized something with Abu Dhabi, still does it safe. His positivity uh, record out of all the fighters for this entire year is 0.8%. So not even like whatever protocol he put in place to, to quarantine, to fight. Cause you know, everyone, it's a nightmare. Everyone always, you always hear you fly to Vegas first. Then you quarantine for how long? And then you fly to Abu Dhabi and then you're in Abu Dhabi for like two two weeks and then uh, you fight or Dubai and then you fight. So his whole quarantine process has less than 1% positive. Wow. And he spent $17 million on COVID tests alone this year. Fuck. But how much did he make? Exactly. So yep. for him, it's like... And there he's is still, no downer, And bitch. he still put on some of the best fights that we've seen this year. Yes. We saw Khabib have a performance of a lifetime. And retire. And retire. Like, it's his uh, his tenaciousness. And I, I just like that. Um, I feel like if There's I... There's no nose if, in if, that guy's if, book. If I, like, stripped him down, you're not going to find a white flag. And that's what I like. Because I feel like a lot of... A lot of people that are un that aren't inspiring to me, I feel like you already the white flag is slipping out of the pocket. <laughs> like ah, there it is. 
I just know if I push enough buttons, this fool's gonna give They're up. They're all dressed in white already. Yeah, but for him, he's like, strip me down. You're ne I'm never gonna surrender. It's You'll tight. never know where my white flag I like is. That. Yeah, so uh, you can't be a downer. Yeah. There's no downers here, motherfuckers. We're all champions. And that's how we're gonna fucking, that's how we're gonna dominate. Everyone listening right now that's made it this far, we're all fucking champions. So let's fucking get this shit. It's exactly, you kind of sound like me at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Let's get this shit. All right. Uh, let's wrap it up. All right. So I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BetterHelp. Just remember that there's a special offer going on right now uh, for all of you guys, especially listening. You're going to get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash bill. Okay. And also thank you to Honey. Just a reminder, there is no purchase necessary. You do need a PayPal account to redeem the prize. And it's only valid in the U.S. Um, and the giveaway ends 12 21 of this year. Um, so make sure to get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash bell. That's joinhoney.com slash B E A W.